What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be part two in building a hangman uh, game from scratch, a playable uh, hangman game with Python. And if you missed the first video, what we got it to was you enter a secret word in the game and then uh, the game stars it out and replaces it all with the secret characters. Then as you guess letters, if you get them right, it fills it in. Um, and then, uh, let's see, grit. There you go. And then the, the function ends once you've guessed all the letters in the word. So uh, it, that obviously wasn't super glamorous. We haven't done things like actually draw a character or keep track of incorrect guesses or handled um, what happens when you either win or lose at the end of the game. So if you missed that first video, be sure to go and check it out. Uh, it, it should have come out right before this one. Um, but if you're just here for the concept in this video or uh, you're following along, let's get right into it. So what we've done already is we've checked the guess to see if we need to update our secret word, but what we're not doing is keeping track of correct or incorrect guesses, right? So you don't want someone necessarily to be able to re-guess a letter, like you, but, but it's kind of hard to keep track of everything that you've guessed already if we don't display it to the users. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up where we created our variables initially and I'm going to create two lists. I'm going to create two empty lists. I'll call one guesses and I will call the other one wrong guesses. And if you think about it, uh, we need to keep track of all the letters that have been guessed so we don't um, need to run our guess function over again if somebody's already guessed a character. But the wrong guesses is actually more important because we need to keep track of if you've used up all your tries or not. Um, so okay, I've created those empty lists because then um, when we are uh, checking the guesses and the wrong guesses, then we need to come down to our code, new guess. So um, no matter what, when they uh, when they haven't solved the word yet, we'll ask for a new guess. But then what we're gonna do is check if new guess is not in guesses. So this is us checking to see if uh, if the, the letter, the character that was just guessed is not in our guesses table already. And uh, if it isn't, then we're going to add it to the table. So um, again, I, I said this in the last video, if you're totally unfamiliar with like basic fundamentals of Python, you probably want to go back and check out some of the tutorials on like lists and dictionaries and, and creating functions, passing in variables. Because um, I'm not going to explain everything in detail, but uh, this append function, we're basically saying if the new guess hasn't already been guessed, add our new guess to the list of guesses. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, and then, okay, so that's cool. Then we're going to check our secret word, see if we need to update it. And then we'll say if the new guess is not in the word, that's what's going to make it a wrong guess, right? And new guess not in wrong guesses. So we're not going to punish the user for trying to guess a, a, a wrong letter multiple times. Um, so this is checking to see if whatever character they just punched in is not in the actual answer and the new guess is not already been guessed. Then at that point, we are going to wrong guesses dot append just like before and we are going to put in new guess okay so uh, this isn't super duper useful if we don't display it to the users so let's go ahead and print out um, after they've made a guess we'll print you have guessed and then let's just print all of the guesses our whole guest list and then let's also print these have been wrong guesses and then let's print wrong guesses so now every time they go through uh, to guess a new letter they're going to be shown every guess that they've made already whether it was right or wrong um, and that'll help them make their next guess. So let's go ahead 
and run this and just see if it works the way we think we're gonna work. So let's say our secret word is password. Let's guess A. Cool, you've guessed A, these have been wrong. Nice, let's put Q in there. You've guessed A and Q, these have been wrong. The secret word is this, guess a letter. P, S, W, T. Nice. So this is pretty sweet. Um, I mean, this is how actual hangman works, right? You write down the layers that have been guessed or not. Um, but you may be saying one pretty important element of hangman is actually drawing a figure that progressively gets more filled in and dead as you go. And we'll actually just do kind of a fun, simple way to do that um, in, in a Python file here. So let's go ahead and before we check, uh, before we print out the guesses and the wrong guesses, Let's also uh, do a new function, and I'll just call it check dead guy, um, because that's in, in Hangman um, the number of oops uh, caps lock again. Um, in Hangman, the number of wrong guesses determine how many characters have been drawn on your dead guy. So <laughs> let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and make this function. We called it check dead guy, and we're passing in. Oh, we'll call it something different so we don't get confused um, while writing the function. We'll call these bad guesses. And um, this is gonna be, it's gonna look kind of like a messy function because we have to put a lot of um, print statements on here because we want it to look like we're drawing like a gallows um, that we'll hang a guy at. So let's say no matter what, um, every time we check the dead guy, let's print like a uh, underscore underscore period. And that's going to be like the horizontal part of gallows. And then we'll print uh, space space vertical bar. So that'll look kind of like the, the horizontal and then vertical part of the gallows. Um, oh. Those gotta be strings. It's awesome. Okay, so that should be good for the first two. Um, let's go ahead and put some spaces after it because I think this needs to be five wide. Now we need to start checking our bad guesses. So right, everything after just drawing the structure that holds the our little dead guy up. Um, is going to be dependent on how many wrong guesses there have been. So let's say if length of bad guesses is greater than zero, so that means there's been at least one bad guess, um, then we do want to print uh, our little guy's head because that's the first character that gets drawn. So we'll say, okay, well, if you've made at least one bad guess, let's print out a head. And then the next piece would be kind of similar to that. If uh, your length of bad guesses is greater than one, right? Then why don't we print out space space his neck? Okay. And do, 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 do. no, I guess this would be the same. This would be the same uh, row we would want to put his arms in, right? So uh, it's not as simple as just saying greater than one we have to put some additional conditions here and check if it's one two or three because then the second row will look a little different so let's say if the length is exactly two then all we want to do is print out this guy um, but if the length is three now you've got an arm right so now we want to print out that guy we'll say it's his left arm and then if it's exactly four or greater than four, so actually I will just say if it is greater than three, because that means it's four or up. Um, but in that case, we want it to print out both arms. So now you can kind of see, we're gonna say, okay, well you've guessed one wrong guess, you get a little head. You've guessed two wrong guesses, you get a neck. Three wrong guesses, you get your left arm four and up you get your right arm and then uh, now we need to handle the next row down for the legs so let's go ahead and say we want to put like a torso segment in there and so we will copy our if length of bad 
guesses. And you could like say for each total number of guesses, just create the whole character and say like, um, well, at this point we want this whole shape to be drawn. I actually think this is a, a little bit better way of doing it by like as a coder, but you're allowed to do it however you want as long as it works. Um, so let's say if the length of the bad guesses is then greater than four, we'll also print out a torso section. Um, and you, you don't have to worry about these going in order um, because it's going to go down and check each rung uh, consecutively. So like you're only going to get um, one of these three and it's only going to happen after the head has been printed, which will only happen after these are printed. So let's just keep rocking and rolling. Say if the length of the bad guesses um, is greater than five, now we have to check two things again. We have to check if the length is exactly six, because if it is you haven't died yet and we want to print out your first leg and then I hope that's right I did two spaces maybe that should just be one yeah we'll see when we run it um, and then what we want to do next is if the length uh, we'll just do else um, because we're saying now the length of the bad guesses was greater than five but not equal to exactly six. So that just means you're dead. So space, leg, space, other leg, space. Cool. Um, so that should handle drawing the dead guy as we get up into, um, as we get up into uh, making mistakes and stuff. Um, and let's go ahead and run it. So let's check it out. We're getting very close to being done with our hangman function. Let's enter a secret word, call it secret, guess A. Okay, so A wasn't in there and you see we got this little gallows with a head. Let's guess another wrong one, W. Okay, we get a torso. I'm just gonna be really bad at playing. Q, we get that arm. Uh, y, we get the other arm. U, we've got another torso. Uh, o, P. All right, well, I think that's sweet. We just drew a little dude. Um, <laughs> and uh, let's let's go ahead and handle now the last thing you really have to handle anytime you build a game is success and failure conditions so let's go ahead and put a statement down below while the word is not equal equal to the sequel secret word and we'll say if wrong if the length of wrong guesses equals seven then that means you the whole guy has been uh, has been killed and so we'll print out print you ha you lose you didn't get the word in time yeah we'll say did not because I don't feel like messing around with syntaxing uh, additional parentheses okay you did not get the word in time but then we'll say else print nice the word was and we'll say word okay so um, one thing we do need to check then is that we only ask for new uh, new stuff when the length of wrong guesses is less than seven right so that's how we'll exit the while loop if you either got the word correct or you've guessed too many times um, so let's see too many blank blank okay um, so that way you'll exit your while loop under either of those two conditions and depending on which one is uh, actually what's going down then um, then that'll handle our exit scenario so I think that's all we need to do let's go ahead and run this Oh, one thing I did see just last time we were playing it, um, after you enter a secret word, I think it'd be more fun if the word disappears so that you can't see it. So um, I am gonna say that we should, after the secret word has been entered, I think we should, for I in range, let's set up a quick little, um, we'll just print out seven lines of, of nothing. 
so that after you enter a secret word, um, we're just going to print seven blank lines so uh, you can no longer see the secret word. So let's see if that works. Um, we'll say our secret word we want to be Hufflepuff. Okay, so now what's kind of cool is because of those blank words, you could still scroll up if you wanted to and see the secret word, but now if you're actually playing this, you could enter a word, pass it to your friend, and they're going to know how many characters it is and, and start guessing from there. So let's guess A, let's guess S, D, F. Oh, well, we got a whole bunch of those. All right, and you can see our little guy getting drawn. T, Y. And then we lost because we didn't get the word in time. Let's run it again. And we'll just say Wittich. And let's get it really fast this time because we're smart. Quit. Let's guess something wrong so our guy has something to do. Uh, let's try guessing an A again because we've already guessed an A. And you can see it doesn't make the guy any more dead and it doesn't add another spot to the, dead, uh, the wrong guesses or correct guesses. Let's guess an H. Nice, the word was Quidditch. Okay, so uh, there we go. That's in two videos. That's how you build start to finish a, a pretty cool hangman function um, from scratch. And uh, it covered a lot of really useful things like for and while loops, uh, a lot of string manipulation, checking length of lists, and um, a, a lot of great uh, c creating functions, passing in global variables, passing in local variables and handling different conditions so hopefully you found that useful uh, it's uh, obviously kind of a silly game but it covers a bunch of really useful python concepts and uh, if you did or you have any questions about what you saw here or something you want to see next go ahead and let me know about in the comments below and if you found this useful i really appreciate a like and a subscribe it helps the channel out a ton and as always good luck with your code and thanks for watching thanks bye